Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the 2015 USBC Women's Championships. This is Matt Canizaro flying solo for this team event here at the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada. We'll see if we can get some guests on over the next couple of hours, but we've got uh, two very talented teams uh, coming from Florida and Dayton, Ohio. And we'll have the lineups for you here in just one second. Do appreciate everybody stopping by, giving us part of your Sunday evening. And hopefully USBC Hall of Famer Lucy Sandlin will give you something exciting to watch. Right now we're behind lanes 19 and 20 here at the National Bowling Stadium. And we've got Team Scob anchored by Mandy Wilson, a top senior player. And she's made a USBC Queens telecast in the past, so definitely a lot of experience there. And she'll be joined by Beth Owen Sipalewski, Jennifer Peacock, and Kay Roush. And we'll have all the details on these folks uh, as the night progresses. And our other team, led by USBC Hall of Famer Lucy Sandlin, two-time Senior Queens champ, World Cup champion. Lineup includes Stephanie Beck from Dubuque, Iowa, Amanda Flood from Brandon, Florida, Jennifer Hernandez from Lando Lakes, Florida, and Sandlin herself. So this year at the Women's Championships, of course, four-player teams. A little bit of a change from the past. So we'll take a look at the leaderboard right now to see what it's going to take for these two teams to find their way to the top of the leaderboard. Both teams bowling in the diamond division. There's the highest division here at the women's championships.
All right, so when the Diamond Division teams come in with combined averages of 725 and above, again, at the WC, four divisions in the team event, Diamond, Ruby, Emerald, and Sapphire. And six divisions in doubles and singles now. Diamond, Ruby, Emerald, Sapphire, Amethyst, and Topaz. So definitely an opportunity for bowlers of all skill levels. Averages ranging from 190 and above to 129 and below. Definitely, definitely something for everybody here. And just a great chance to compete on the biggest stage in women's bowling. This year's event expected to draw more than 4,000 teams to the biggest little city in the world. And it's the end of a four-year run for the Women's Championships in Reno, Nevada. 2012 and 15, both were held here at the one-of-a-kind NBS, while 13 and 14 saw a spectacular 44-lane installation across town at the Reno Sparks Convention Center. So just a little bit different scenery and uh, definitely a very nice part of town there on the south side of Reno. If you haven't ventured much outside of downtown, I would recommend when you come this way, do so. That is in the Atlantis general area. Pepper Mill down that way too. A little bit closer to the airport. Uh, a lot of great restaurants and shopping down that way. So on the leaderboards, out in front for the second consecutive year, is the defending Diamond Team Champion, Believe in a Cure, 26-34. So a big number on top there. It's a 658 average for the four players. Uh, that team includes 2014 Diamond All Events winner, Linda Barnes, Janiel Milligan, Kendra Gaines, and Shannon O'Keefe. And this year, Milligan and Barnes put on a show, also took the doubles lead with 14.04, and Milligan went on to grab the top spot in Diamond All Events with 21.69, and has uh, not been challenged in three weeks. So still a lot of great bowlers headed this way, some already in town. We saw some earlier, Brandy Sanderson, from Bossier City, Louisiana, made a run at all events. She shot 7.45 in doubles, 700 in singles, 6.49 in team for 2094, which is fifth. And her and Kristen Warzinski snuck into second place in diamond doubles, came up just a little bit short of that 14.04 number. They closed with 13.92, but a terrific performance. Those two always around the top of the leaderboard. Warzinski with a 300 here in the past and Sanderson briefly had the lead last year in singles uh, before she was overtaken I believe on the very next squad but right now 2634 is the number we're looking for in this team event and so far World Cup Bowling Academy clean through three frames Sandlin up on lane 20 again she's a USBC Hall of Famer two time Senior Queens champion. She won the AMF World Cup back in the 1970s. Former Team USA member. And quite a long list of accolades. Of course, that's how you get yourself into the Hall of Fame. And this is her 35th USBC Women's Championship. So some terrific dedication and a fine career there for Miss Sandlin. Back on the leaderboards. Second place, East Coast, Palm Harbor, Florida. That team includes Ashley Galante, Diana Zavialova, Danielle McEwen, and Alyssa Harper. And they're at 25.88, followed by Eagles Edge Pro Shop, 25.11. Striking is fun too, 25.05. And fifth place, one more, 24.84. So. To get into the top five, it will take just about 2,500 here.
six twenty five a person. Just joining us again, this is Matt Canizaro, and we're live at the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada, showcasing the 2015 USBC Women's Championships with a good mix of talent and experience here behind lanes 19 and 20. In this one of a kind NBS. Been a pretty nice surprise to see all the top players in town this week. And also one on this squad, 2011 Scratch All Events winner, Dee Dee Davidson, the only bowler in women's championships history with a 300 game and 800 series. She did both that year in two different events. So pretty nice to, to see Dee Dee back on the lanes. And we'll keep an eye on how she's doing. Down on the low side, looks like seven and eight. And, uh, Looks like we have about 44 lanes going, 46 lanes for this 4 p.m. team event. Definitely looking forward to some possible excitement here as Sandlin strikes to keep things clean for her team through four frames. So with these four player teams now, things move a whole lot quicker. At the Women's Championships, we're already nearing the halfway point of the opening game. 26-34 is the number to beat.
Alright, so we're back in business here. Just had a little technical assistance and things now running smoothly. As the clean streak for World Cup Bowling Academy came to an end there in the fifth frame with uh, the split from Hernandez. Nice crowd joining us tonight, and we do appreciate the support for this premier women's event. This is the opening game of today's 4 o'clock team event. championships this year being contested on a 40 foot lane condition using Kegel Fire Oil. If you'd like to check out the lane graph you can visit bull.com slash women's champ and click on the information tab and you'll be able to see the colorful graph and all the numbers and details that you would need. Definitely had some excitement today here at the Women's Championships. A lot of changes in the leaderboards. Six in total across the different divisions. So if you're curious about how things are unfolding this year at the NBS, 
Again, you can visit bull.com slash women's champ. And there's leaderboards on there. If you had somebody come through, you want to see how they did individually, you can check out their individual results. And if you want to follow along right now, for example, Dee Dee Davidson, the USBC Hall of Famer, bowling down on lane 7 and 8. You can check out live scoring provided by X Bowling. All of that available on the Women's Championships page with a lot of other great information and, of course, news and notes about everything that's been happening here this year in Reno. Again, Diamond Team event, number to beat, 26-34, 6.58 a person. Definitely a tall task here. But all of these ladies, very accomplished. Three for three here in the eighth frame. And five for five across the pair.
Lucy Sandlin with a pair of titles here at the Women's Championships and the trophy next to her name on the scoreboard uh, is what represents those championships. She took home the classic doubles title in 1991 with Cindy Colburn Carroll. They shot 13-18. And then again in 1994, tied for the championship with 13-07. Right, looks like Mandy Wilson has a double title here as well in 1996 with USBC Hall of Famer Linda Kelly. So we'll see if we can't get that trophy up on the scoreboard for her as well. All right, so the foundation frames here. Wrapping up ninth frame, 10th frame coming right. Stephanie Beck started things off for World Cup Bowling Academy in the 10th frame. And just like that, game one nearly done.
appreciate everybody joining us. You're watching the conclusion of game number one here of the 4 p.m. team event at the 2015 USBC Women's Championships. Two talented teams, one from Florida, one from Ohio, trying to chase down that bull even a cure number 26-34. appreciate anybody and everybody stopping by tell your friends show these ladies some support Leadoff bowlers getting things done here with a couple of 200 games. Of course, that's the all important spark for the team. Get things going. Great shot there from Amanda Flood for the double coming back off that open frame in the ninth. So nice finish there for Flood for 214. All right, looks like Kay Rouse is going to go to the bag, try something different for the fill ball. A little hard to tell in here and from here exactly what's going down the lane. Pretty sure that was a Hammer Red Legend from Lucy. As uh, I was able to take a look in her bag earlier today. I had the honor of joining Miss Sandlin downstairs 
for a quick double set at the USBC Mixed, a brand new event here being held alongside the USBC Women's Championships. A great opportunity for those husbands and friends and brothers who make the trip out here as well to uh, get some games in. Definitely seen some of the support staff taking advantage of that event. USBC Mixed inaugural year includes team competition, mixed doubles, and singles. Team event being held alongside the Women's Championships up here on the main lanes at the National Bowling Stadium. We've got 78 lanes wall to wall here on the fourth floor of the NBS. And 10 lanes downstairs, the showcase lanes, that's where doubles and singles takes place. Nice start for World Cup Bowling Academy, 8.32. But going back to the mixed, some of the, the husbands and friends in town. We've got some talented players for the WC, including uh, from Texas, Jeannie Franklin, uh, former Team USA member, Tina Williams. And they brought their husbands along. Tony Franklin, a top player, has found some success at the Open Championships. And of course, Stuart Williams uh, from England, for British Beefcake. And they both have been downstairs bowling mixed doubles with their wives and a little bit of singles action. Sean Riccardi, a uh, former champion at the Bowler's Journal Championships, down there with his wife, Melissa. She made her women's championships debut. And they just took advantage. Sean had a 298 game at the mixed earlier today. And they moved into the top five in the Division I mixed doubles. So uh, great to see. All the bowlers heading down. And only hoping that event continues to succeed and grow as the Women's Championships heads to Las Vegas in 2016. So game one in the books here. Uh, Team Scob 766. And World Cup Bowling Academy 832. So definitely off to a nice start and down on lanes seven and eight. We've got our eye on Hall of Fame Rititi Davidson. She got off to a little bit of a slow start here, but her teammate Sherry Johnson, 235. So we'll keep tabs on how things are happening down there. Tell you a little bit about the players on our featured pair again. My name is Matt Canizaro, and we're live here behind lanes 19 and 20 at the National Bowling Stadium. Uh, Leadoff bowler for Team Scob, Beth Owen Sepaluski, her 26th USBC Women's Championships. Jennifer Peacock making her fifth appearance and first since 2007. So great to see her back on the lanes. Kay Roush, Dade City, Florida. Well, in her sixth event, has not appeared at the WC since 2011. And of course, Mandy Wilson, we mentioned her doubles title. She is making her 27th Women's Championships appearance with a 201.9 career average. For World Cup Bowling Academy, Stephanie Beck, tournament number 13, followed by Amanda Flood making her ninth appearance. Jennifer Hernandez, number 12, and the Hall of Famer Lucy Sandlin, number 35, a 200.4 average for her career here.
Squad times here at the 2015 Women's Championships. Doubles and singles. 8 a.m. and noon. Team events at 4 and 7 p.m. So we've had accident on the lanes all day today. Along with non-stop USB-C mixed competition happening downstairs at the showcase lanes. You now there's going to be a couple of mixed teams alongside tonight's 7 p.m. team event. Again, for those of you just dropping in, the score to beat this year in the Diamond Team event, 26-34, the defending champion, believing a cure. But remember, this tournament, not only about the top level players, there's a spot for everybody, as we have four divisions in the team event, and six for doubles and singles. Anywhere from 190 and above to 129 and below. So don't be intimidated. Come on out. Check out the Women's Championships. Check out the Mixed. A nice stepping stone. A little bit more laid back. And your opportunity to find an affordable experience. Or take advantage of one more competitive opportunity. While in town for the WC. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TV. So you'll be well informed about any upcoming or current live stream broadcasts. If you missed anything uh, from this trip to the USBC Women's Championships, we had on Hall of Famer Tish Johnson yesterday afternoon, uh, as well as previous coverage from Reno. Aaron Smith was here to see Goal leaving a cure, not only take the team lead again, but Tennille Milligan uh, taking doubles and all events. So all of that was captured live on Bowl TV. And you can find it in the archives under the Women's Championships playlists. Also had a lot of great moments from the Open Championships this year in El Paso. And of course the recent USBC Queens and Senior Queens. Lucy Sandlin made the top five step ladder roll off at the Senior Queens in Green Bay, as did Mandy Wilson. I do believe I might have misspoken there just a minute ago. I'm going to take a look at this year's Senior Queens results. We'll see the 2013 champion at that event.
of this year's tournament. Lucy was just shy of the step ladder, but she was there in person to present Robin Romeo with the tiara as the defending champion. Robin, of course, could not present that to herself, so Lucy was there to do the honors. Mandy Wilson finished fourth at that event. Third place was newcomer Lisa Wasson from Murphy, Texas, a top bowler from that area. Just uh, getting into the senior queens world. And then, of course, Robin taking down Tish Johnson in the title match. Third consecutive runner-up finish there for Tish. Romeo, the fourth bowler to win the Senior Queens twice, joining Hall of Famers Sandy Postma, who has three, Shirley Levins, I'm sorry, Sandy Postma, Shirley Levins, and of course Lucy Sandlin, who has two of her own. Be here for all three games of the team event. 8:32 start for World Cup Bowling Academy. 7:66 for Team Scob. Great shot there by Lucy. First strike of game two here. Lucy at 215 in the opener. High on the pair. Down on lane seven, Sherry Johnson started with 235, still striking, has the first three here in game two. Dee Dee Davidson with a double of her own. Again, a 40-foot lane condition, about 3.1 to 1, I think, is the ratio. So not quite sport compliant, but still pretty challenging. And featuring the Kegel Ice Oil. Back in 2013, Fire and Ice, introduced by... Kegel, our official lane maintenance provider. The idea is for those oils to hold up a little bit longer, transition less, and keep the pattern truer throughout the event. And 
oil patterns laid out daily by the top of the line Kegel Flex Lane Machine. Again, fire oil being used here at the WC Ice at the Open Championships taking place in El Paso, Texas this year. Ice a little bit slicker. Fire tends to hook a little bit more. So many similarities between the USBC Open and Women's Championships, but yet each event still with its own personality, its own histories and traditions. And then, of course, going back from back and forth between the two, sometimes get a little tripped up there. But I uh, appreciate everybody's patience. Again, you're watching live coverage from the Women's Championships here in Reno, Nevada, ending a four-year run here at the NBS and Reno Sparks Convention Center. Next year, both events, the women's and the mixed, headed to the new South Point Bowling Plaza in Las Vegas, part of the South Point Casino. A brand new 60 lane, 30 plus million dollar facility. has already hosted some top events, including the World Series of Bowling. The women's championships and mixed will be the first USBC national tournaments to be held there. Registration already open for the WC. Spots are filling quickly, so check out bowl.com for more information to get your squat time set in. If you bowl the women's championships here in 2015, you're guaranteed your same dates and times for just a 60-day window. And once that time frame is up, all spots will be opened up to any interested participants. Now that we know a little bit more about the mix and of course everybody excited about going to Las Vegas. You can start making plans. Get your best guy friends and make it a long weekend. A lot of opportunity for competition. I mentioned Lucy Sandlin taking advantage of the mix earlier today. She and I bowled mixed doubles. Down there, three quick games. And we shot 12.91. Just missed the top two spots. Now I believe we're down to fourth place after that great performance by Sean and Melissa Riccardi earlier. So anytime you can go to a national event and get your name in the top five, it's got to feel pretty good. And I think that was a good chance for Lucy to, to get loosened up and get a couple games in before heading up here for the 4 p.m. team event. And I know she'll be bowling in the mixed team competition at 7 p.m. tonight. So uh, a lot of bowling, a long day. And, uh, of course, they'll be back on the lanes tomorrow for doubles and singles. So again, uh, if you're curious about the lane condition here, you can see the graph at bowl.com slash women's champ. 
And if you go to bull.com slash mixed, you can check out the mixed pattern. Uh, team event is the same 40 foot pattern. The mixed doubles and singles, just one foot longer. Uh, again, that taking place downstairs at the showcase lanes. And yes, both events being contested on Kegel Fire Oil. So far this year at the WC, no perfect games. And uh, none at the mix. Had 298 earlier. Still a lot of great players to come through. This year's events kicked off April 10th. And they'll run for 82 days, wrapping up June 30th. The final week of the event. A couple talented teams for sure, including... Hall of Famer Carolyn Doran Ballard and then 2012 Diamond Team Champion some striking hot from Albuquerque New Mexico they've been in the top five for the last three years uh, Aaron Smith will actually be headed back this way the last week of June to live stream a few of those final teams and wrap things up on the 30th with the final recap from this year's tournament he'll have the opportunity perhaps to call and congratulate some champions. Right now we mentioned in the Diamond Team event, the defending champion, Bolivian Acure, 26-34. And leading the way there, Tania Milligan in position to claim three titles here at the WC. That hasn't happened since 2012 when Lindsey Boomershine did so. But Tania also leading Diamond doubles with Linda Barnes, 14.04, and Diamond all events with 21.69. Now in the back half of game number two here. World Cup Bowling Academy, 832 in the opener. Not too far off pace from our tournament leaders. Believe it cure. Shot 864 to start things out. To get into the top 10 today, it'll take 2404. Team Scob 766, so a little bit more work to do.
All right here, Sandlin stepping up on lane 19. Got off to a little bit of a slow start here in game two, but working on a double now. Try to get some momentum here. Start of the day with 215. High game on the pair. And she leaves the split, the 2410. This 40 foot pattern. A little bit tricky for some. Tell you from my experience downstairs today. Very easy to make a mistake and threw a lot of strikes, but mixed in a whole bunch of five and six counts and throwing away that many pins, never a good idea. I think I only had three single pins the entire day. But still feel pretty good overall about the performance and Got to learn to focus a little bit more and eliminate those errant shots if possible, of course. That is the goal of every player. Looks like we had a new doubles leader downstairs at the mixed. Stuart and Tina Williams. 14-20. So perhaps we'll go down and chat with them and have a recap for you on Bull.com. But right now it's all about USBC Hall of Famer Lucy Sandlin and these two talented teams on lanes 19 and 20 here at the NBS.
Bolt TV veteran Mark London checking in in the chat room. Mark, welcome back. Hope you made it home safely. We definitely are on the world tour of bowling here. So far this month, been to Green Bay for the USBC Queens and Senior Queens. Of course, stationed in El Paso for the USBC Open Championships and Bowler's Journal Championships presented by USBC. And now here for the long weekend in Reno, showcasing the top women in this premier event, USBC Women's Championships, and talking a lot about the USBC Mixed. And we'll have a recap again of our new doubles leaders uh, in the next couple days. We also had a 50-year young lady here at the WC this weekend. So um, a lot of great news coming out of the National Bowling Stadium, and glad to be able to bring it to you live here on Bowl TV. the foundation frame game two rolling along quickly Tenth frame getting underway here. Beth Owen Sipaluski and Stephanie Beck. Great shot there by Stephanie. She had 210 in the opener. Nice to see some solid numbers here online and in our chat room. Do appreciate. Everybody tuning in. Nice double there for Beck. All right, 170 for Beth. And 200 on the nose for Stephanie.
All right, so far, Stephanie Beck, games of 210 and 200. Amanda Flood, 214, 191. Jennifer Hernandez wraps up a clean, almost clean. There's a hole in the seventh frame. 204, she started with 193. And up top, Beth Owen Sipalewski, 170. She opened with 203. Jennifer Peacock, 201, 202. Kay Roush, 176, 186. And now just waiting on Mandy Wilson and Lucy Sandlin to wrap things up here. Again, you saw Mandy Wilson on the stepladder finals. the stepladder finals at the USBC Senior Queens. Lucy just missed the show but was there to present the TR to back-to-back -back champion Robin Romeo. Mandy Wilson finished fourth at that event. Always a top senior contender. You can see them again over Labor Day weekend at the US Women's Open. Very exciting time for women's bowling as the revitalized PWBA Tour just kicked off earlier this month with the USBC Queens. It'll be a 10 event schedule going coast to coast. Professional women's bowling is back. Nearly 100 PWBA members now. The next event will be early July in Sacramento and then the tour will make its way down through Texas and the Midwest and up to New Jersey for the US Women's Open in North Brunswick that'll be Labor Day weekend and then the top 16 points leaders from the PWBA tour will qualify for a season ending event more details and all the top players can be seen at pwba.com but a very exciting time and for many their careers were cut short when the pwba closed its doors in 2003 uh, some were in college and looking forward to a career on tour and some were just youngsters and never had the chance to dream about professional bowling until now so good to see the the mix of generations at the queens and a lot of excitement surrounding the upcoming tour so if you're a, an interested lady contender, definitely try to find an event near you. Get out there and compete against the best in the world. There's also going to be pro-ams at every stop and a chance to come out and meet the players and see what the new PWBA is all about. So right now, game three underway for Team Scob of Dayton, Ohio, 766. 7.28 and World Cup Bowling Academy Lucy of course in her free time a top coach down in the Tampa area and as a World Cup champion of course the name very fitting but her team 8.32 and 7.86 It'll take 10-16 for Lucy and her team to catch our leaders. Definitely a very tough task. Asking for 250 plus a bowler. If 
We're just dropping in. It's the grand finale of today's team event and this week's live coverage from the USBC Women's Championships. This is Matt Canizaro flying solo here behind lanes 19 and 20 at the one of a kind National Bowling Stadium. We had USBC Hall of Famer Tiss Johnson on yesterday for doubles and singles. And then Aaron Smith will be back in town later in the month of June to help wrap up this year's tournament. Again, 10-16 needed for the crew to catch Believe in a Cure. 26-34. Beth Owen Sipolewski, also a two-time champion here at the WC. 1995, classic all events and classic singles. So the talent level of this group spans the decades.
and still have it as they are regulars at the top senior events. Amanda Flood, three for three here in game number three. And Jennifer Hernandez trying to match that effort. It's going to take 250 plus per bowler. But the top 10, very doable at this point. Do some quick math here. So they'll just have to match their game two effort, 786, to make the top 10. Then, of course, they'll all be back on the lanes tomorrow for doubles and singles. We'll keep an eye on them for all events and so many possibilities. Again, terrific bowlers in town. Still got our eye on Dee Dee Davidson and her team down on lane seven. 766, 761. Sherry Johnson leading away there with games of 235 and 209. Great to see all the support for the women's championships. So thank you all for tuning in. Lucy's going to take a re-rack on lane 20. She, of course, knows the importance of this game and a strong finish here. Made a flood, still perfect here in the finale, three for three. See if she can keep that streak going here, stepping up on the left lane. Two-time champ, Beth Owen Sipalewski. Just looking for three in a row, denied by the four pin.
So Flood 4 for 4 and World Cup Bowling Academy 3 out of 4 so far. Lucy trying to make it a clean, a perfect fourth frame. And she does with her first strike here in game 3. Curious how the leaderboards are shaping up here in 2015. Again, you can visit bull.com slash women's champ for all the details. Overall standings for each event or the opportunity for individual results for your favorite players. Sipalewski back on it in the fifth frame and Stephanie Beck trying to keep the string going for a World Cup Bowling Academy. We've got a team four bagger. She goes a little bit light, two, four, five. All right, so the run comes to an end for Flood with the two pin on lane 20. She misses that one to the right. Back to back opens now after the team four bagger. So it looks like we will not have a new team leader here. As we finish out the month of May at the Women's Championships, things are about to come to a close. 
top players will continue to head this way. Take on the women's championships experience until June 30th. So if you haven't made it out, there's still time. Entries open until June 29th. So plenty of time to put together a team come this way. Bring the guys, also bowl in the mix. So why not take advantage? And if you are interested in visiting the new South Point Bowling Plaza in 2016, entries are open for the Women's Championships. Spots are filling quickly. like that second half of game three terrific shot there from Beth on lane 20 she's got 203 and 170 so far On our way to having both of those scores beat. So a couple of doubles for Team Scob trying to make a run here at a solid team finish. We won't see a new leader, but 2404, the number to get into the top 10, very doable. Hernandez was four out of five, but a little bit high there. Leaves the three six on the double. Bear no problem for Jennifer. Terrific shot from Mandy Wilson. She likes that right lane. Perfect here in game three. Three nine spares on the left. Terrible break there for the Hall of Famer, the A-10 on the double. Should take one.
as these lane conditions get a little bit flatter definitely the bad shots are magnified it always seems like you don't just miss by a little bit and leave a four pin or a six pin it's always a, a big split or a, a washout Alright again, World Cup Bowling Academy needed 10-16 here in the finale. Going to be short of that, so we'll not take the lead. But still needs 786 to make it into the top 10. All right, Mandy Wilson finally conquers that left lane for the double. She's been perfect on the right. Just three frames left here of today's broadcast. Thanks to everybody for joining us. For me, Matt Canizaro, live at the 2015 Women's Championships. If you have any final questions, now's the time to ask. A very lively group in the chat room. Some helpful folks. And if there's anything I can offer, certainly reach out. You can do it there. Or you can find me by email. Or on Facebook, Matt Canizaro USBC. Or on Twitter, at USBC Matt. Always glad to help. And typically pretty quick to respond. Nice shot there by Jennifer Peacock, but the 10 does not cooperate. Amanda Flood 
back on track after that missed two pin that came in the fifth frame after a four baggers that one's a little bit wide right leaves the two pin again this women's championships oil pattern 40 feet and if you want to take a look at the colorful graph and all the details you can visit bull.com slash women's champ click on the information tab and it will be there for you. A link to this year's graph. Great shot from Hernandez. Frustrated with the carry a little bit. Andy Wilson having a great game so far, but the five count washout on her good lane. Unable to capitalize on that double. Lucy almost gets a break. Cleans up that mess. Still cruising here in game number three. She had 186 and 170, so looking for an improvement here in the finale. We're down to our final two frames. Stephanie Beck gonna start things off here in the ninth. Seven pin goes late. Zipaluski, third consecutive nine count and been in the pocket this whole game. Only a couple doubles to show for it. So Beth still clean through nine frames. A little frustrated, understandably so, throwing terrific shots.
the strings of strikes just not coming here today for Team Scob and World Cup Bowling Academy. A lot of terrific shots and unfortunate carry and some terrible breaks. But that's bowling, folks. Still going to see a couple of solid scores here overall. Lucy mixes them up to five and the seven. Go down late. Here we are, our final frame of today's broadcast. Brought to you by our gold industry partners, Columbia 300, Hammer, Kegel, and Storm. Thank you all for your support and everything you do to help make the Open and Women's Championships a success each year. Kegel, of course, the official lane maintenance provider, bringing us this fire oil being used at the Women's Championships. And nine. Custom painted Kegel Flex Lane Machines to get the job done at the two tournament sites. Five at the OC, four here at the Women's Championships, the best in the business. And I believe those retail for about $35,000. And when we're done here, all the lane machines will be auctioned off or sold. And the proceeds will go to benefit Folds of Honor, a military organization that helps the families of those serving or killed overseas. You can contact Kegel for more details about that and how to get yourself one of those Kegel Flex machines for your local bowling center. But right now, let's get back to the finale of today's team event. Beth Owen, Sipaluski, and Stephanie Beck. We'll have the totals for you as soon as they're done here. A lot of pins still out there here in the 10th. You need 786 to get into the top 10. Team Scott going to need a, a bit more. Dee Dee Davidson and company making a nice run down on lane 7 and 8 as well. Nice performance here by Amanda Flood in the finale. She had 214 and 191. We'll have all the totals for you as soon as they're done here. K 
Okay, Roush getting in on the strike thon So it's a big game there by Amanda Flood. World Cup Bowling Academy poised to cruise into the top 10 here. Still about 300 people watching, so we definitely appreciate everybody tuning in today, giving us part of your Sunday afternoon. Jennifer Hernandez, 210. Not a bad performance. So they're now past that 786 mark into the 800s. And climbing up into the top 10 here. The crowd knows it. A lot of supporters. Lucy can't get the 10 to go. Got the final tally for you in just a second. They'll be in the top seven for sure. Alright, so that's going to do it. Here's the final scores for you before we go. For Team Scob, Beth Owen Sepalewski, 589. Jennifer Peacock, 581. Kay Roush, 546. Mandy Wilson finishes with 205 for 561. They're at 2277. And World Cup Bowling Academy, Stephanie Beck. 586. Amanda Flood leading the way with 638. Jennifer Hernandez, 607. And Lucy Sandlin, 606 for 2437. That puts them in seventh place. 
Not a bad performance here on Bowl TV, folks. And that's going to do it for our coverage this week from the National Bowling Stadium and the 2015 USBC Women's Championships. Appreciate all the support and everybody tuning in. If you missed any of today or yesterday's broadcast, you can find those in the archives on Bowl TV. And we'll be back live on the air uh, later in the week, June 9th, with USBC Hall of Famer John Gaines in the booth as his four teams take the lanes at the USBC Open Championships in El Paso, Texas. And then late, late in June, Aaron Smith will be back in Reno to wrap things up here at the 2015 tournament. So keep an eye on Bowl.com and Bowl TV for all the exciting news and notes. And that's going to do it for now, folks. That is all the news for now, and we'll see you on the lanes. Thanks for tuning in.